Okay, now we're going to look at positive or negative definite functions. Okay, so when the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero is, the first case is when it's totally above the x-axis, when it's floating above and it does not have any roots. Okay, so I'm going to talk about those functions, that quadratic functions that don't have any roots, okay, and that are above the x-axis, so totally floating and not touching this axis, okay. So the first one is when it's positive definite. This, this kind of case is called a positive definite function. Now in this case, can you see it's a happy face? Which means positive uh, parabola, isn't it? So therefore a, which is the coefficient of x squared, must be positive, right? So for, uh, for it to be a positive parabola, the coefficient of the leading term, x squared, must be positive, right? That's why a has to be greater than zero. Okay, so that's the first thing you must remember for positive definite functions. Now, the discriminant must be less than zero. Okay, the discriminant has to be less than zero. Discriminant is less than zero means it's a negative number. If we have a negative square root, right, if we have square root of a negative value, it's imaginary or unreal, right? The reason for that is because that particular function will have no roots. So if you see that the discriminant is a negative number or less than zero, that means it will have no roots, therefore floating above the x-axis, okay? So these two cases, please remember that for the positive definite function that looks like that, all right? That's the first case. Now I want to describe to you when it's negative definite. So it's a sad face, so it's a, a negative parabola that's below the x-axis and not have any roots, okay? So it's not going to touch the x-axis at all, okay? Basically just the opposite of that. Now in this one, the negative definite parabola, with this one, a, which is the coefficient of x squared, must be less than zero, okay? Has to be less than zero, okay? Because for a parabola to have a negative, for being, to be negative or make a sad face, the coefficient of the leading term must be a negative value, right? That's why a has to be less than zero in the negative definite case, okay? But same as the positive one, the discriminant must also still be less than zero. Okay, so for both cases, positive and negative definite functions, discriminant must be less than zero. Okay, and this applies for all the parabolas. Positive, negative, both discriminants must be less than zero because see how this one doesn't have any roots as well? That means if the discriminant is less than zero, like a negative number, Okay, when we square root a negative number, it makes no sense. It becomes imaginary or unreal, the whole root. So therefore, that means it will have no roots, which means it's floating down the x-axis, below the x-axis, like that. Okay, so the only difference between positive and negative definite parabolas is when is only the shape, okay? The positive one is above the x-axis, the negative one is below. The discriminant is the same, okay? It must be less than zero, but for positive one, a, the coefficient of x squared must be positive or greater than zero, and the negative one, a, must be less than zero. Please remember these two cases, okay, because that's what we're going to be applying on our next few questions, okay? So, starting with question seven, find the value of a for which x squared minus x plus one minus a is greater than zero for all x. So if this whole quadratic function is greater than zero, that means it's above the x-axis, isn't it? Like that. It must be, if it's greater than zero, it must be floating above the x-axis. The x-axis is the point when y is zero, isn't it? So this whole function is y. For y to be greater than zero, it must be above the x-axis. That's why it must be a positive definite one in this case. All right? So have a look at the sign there. Try to draw a diagram if you'd like to have a good idea. Now, remember the case for positive definite uh, quadratic functions? A must be greater than zero. The coefficient of x squared must be greater than zero. But look, the coefficient of x squared is one. So yes, the coefficient of x squared is positive, okay? So it's one, so it's a positive, so that's good. Now what I'm gonna do is apply my discriminant. So b squared minus 4ac must be less than zero, right? These ones, these positive definite ones, they don't have any roots. So as I said previously, the discriminant must be less than zero, okay? So let's apply our ABC into this formula. So A 
is going to be 1, right? This is negative 1x. So in 1 is a, negative 1, okay, negative 1 is b, and 1 minus a, this whole thing is c, okay? The whole thing, 1 minus a is c, okay? So don't get mixed up with that. All right, let's apply it on. B is negative 1, so negative 1 squared is positive 1. So I just wrote positive 1 there. Minus 4, A. A is just 1, so I don't really need to put it there. And C is 1 minus A, so I subbed 1 minus A into there. Okay, do you see that? So I go 1 minus 4 times 1 minus A, subbing all the ABCs into our pro numerals. Okay, and then just simplify now. From now on, it's just algebra. So I'm going to go... 1 minus 4 because negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative a is positive 4a. And that's all less than 0. Simplify. So see, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. If I move it over, it becomes positive 3. So 4a is less than positive 3. Okay, I'm just simplifying step by step. And then now solve for a. So divide both sides by 4. So a becomes less than 3 on 4. Make sure the sign is following, okay? So a is less than 3 on 4 and that's the answer, okay? Because it asks us to find the values of a. So for this function, okay, for this quadratic function to be greater than 0, the value of a, which is that a there, must be less than 3 on 4. Okay, if it's greater than, it's probably not a positive um, definite function. Okay, so that's our solution for question 7. Please remember that discriminant must be less than 0. Okay, that's question 7. Have a look. So we can move on to the next question. So question 8 says, find all values of a for which ax squared minus 2x plus a must be less than 0 for all real x. Okay, so x must be real. Alright, now, this time, this function, this quadratic function here, must be less than zero. Okay, if it's less than zero, remember how this is this whole function represents y. Okay, so if y is less than zero, it must be negative definite below the x-axis sad face. Okay, like that. So it must not touch the x-axis. Okay, so it must be below the x-axis for this to make sense. Okay. So now, now that we need to solve for a negative definite function, quadratic function, the first thing I want to consider is always the coefficient of x squared, which is a. Remember, if it's negative definite like that, if it's a sad face, what are the values of a going to be? Well, first of all, a, a must be less than zero. a must be a negative number in order to make the shape look downwards, right? So first of all, a must be less than zero. So I've got that down, make sure you put that down, there's a first step. Okay, so let's just let that be our equation 1. Now, I'm not finished with that because I also need to apply my discriminant. Remember, if it's negative definite as well as a positive definite quadratic function, discriminant must be less than 0, right? Because this function has no roots. So therefore, b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. Okay, here, that's a. Negative 2 is b and that's C. Okay, so let's apply it all in. So B is negative 2, so negative 2 squared minus 4 times A and C is both A, so I'm going to write A, A. Okay, A times A. Alright, so subbing in your values all into the formula. Now let's simplify. Negative 2 squared is positive 4, and this I'm just going to simplify it to 4A squared. Alright, and then Okay, here, oh, well, basically what I did here, guys, was go, I'm just going to factorize it by 4. So I have 4, 1 minus a squared is less than 0, right? Then I can just divide both sides by 4. So 1 minus a squared is less than 0. Now, I want to change the signs. I'm going to multiply both of them, everything, by a negative 1. So this becomes negative 1 plus a squared. And this side is just 0, but remember if we're multiplying or dividing by a negative number, we switch the sign, right? So we switch the sign like that, okay? And negative 1 plus a squared is the same thing as 
a squared minus 1, right? I'm just switching those around and I get a squared minus 1 is greater than 0. Okay, so I just added in those extra steps just to get to that point, okay, for those who are a um, bit confused. So do add your extra steps if you need to, okay, because I really want you to avoid your silly mistakes, all right? Okay, so now that I've got that, a squared minus 1 is greater than 0. Please don't forget to switch your signs around if you're dividing or multiplying by a negative value. All right, now a plus 1, a minus 1 is greater than 0. I just factorize that. See how a squared minus 1 is a squared minus 1 squared? So I'm going to go a plus 1, a minus 1 is greater than 0. Just factorize it. So therefore, hey guys, if it's a plus 1, a minus 1 is greater than 0, remember, if I draw a parabola, if that's negative 1, that's positive 1. If it's greater than 0, it must be on either side, isn't it? on the outer two sides. So therefore the solutions are A is, for this side, A is less than negative 1. See how it's going to the left hand side? So A must be less than negative 1. And here, it's going towards the right hand side, This all this shaded part. So A must be greater than 1. So we have two different solutions for this one. Okay? So you may like to draw another parabola just to get that straight. Okay? That's that step to that step, I got two solutions for A. All right. Okay, but now that's not the end. I've got A is less than negative 1, A is greater than 1, and I also got A is less than 0. Right? So I've got three different values for A, but they all must make sense. Okay, they must all make this um, th negative definite quadratic function. So therefore, what I need to do is find the common parts of all three um, inequalities. So how I do that is I draw my linear line. Okay, all I do is just draw a little number line, okay? And then that will be the values for A. Now, I'll, okay, I'll do this one. A is less than zero. Let's say zero is there. Okay, that's one, that's negative one, okay? Now, if zero is there, if A is less than zero, it must be going that way, isn't it? These values, for any values that's less than zero going to the left-hand side, represents the values of A, which is less than zero, isn't it? Okay, so that's my first one, so I've done that, tick. Okay, now A is less than negative one, okay? That's negative one. If it's less than negative one, it must be also going towards the left-hand side, okay? So it's this way, from that onwards, okay? Now look at the common, so I've done that one, but now what I need to do is look at the common parts of these two. Okay, because we need to find the common part, don't we? What's the common part, guys? This part is common, isn't it? This part is not common, only this part is common so far. Alright, so it's not going to be this part, it's only going to be this part. Now look at this, A is greater than 1, let's apply this now. A is greater than 1, Is that's 1. If it's greater, it must be going towards the right-hand side because these values are which um, is greater than 1, isn't it? So it must be here. But is that common with these two? No. These are, this, is, this one is not common with this one. So therefore, the only values... So we've got that one there. We've only put that, we've put that there. But guys, see? The only values for which all three inequalities make sense, will make is common with each other, is just this part here. So therefore, only A is less than negative 1, which is represented by this shaded area here. That's the answer. Okay, so from that equation, equation 1 and equation 2, I found that A is less than negative 1, which is that section there, is the only applicable answer. Okay, so A must be negative 1 for this function to be a negative definite quadratic function. All right, does that make sense? So that was a little bit more complex than the previous one. And usually the negative definites, okay? You have to consider firstly the coefficient of x squared, and then you consider the discriminant, and then make sure, make sure you always find the common parts. Like I did here, I really find this doing number line or a number plane really helps. 
Okay, so do this and like shade, like do some coloring and this, um, find the common parts. Okay, and you see that this one is definitely not common with any of these two. So we're just going to ignore that. Okay, we'll eliminate that. All right, so the common part is simply A is less than negative 1, and that's the answer to question 8. So that was positive and negative definite quadratic functions. I hope you know what they look like by now, okay? And make sure you know the properties of each one. For positive definite ones, the coefficient of x squared A must be greater than 0. And for the negative definite one, the coefficient of x squared A must be less than 0, like what we applied here. Okay, and all the time for both positive and negative definite functions, b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant, must always be less than zero. Okay, that indicates having no roots. All right, that was question eight, that was positive and negative um, definite functions.